So that was the Seagull, um, a very popular pipe jig, and uh, played in a very strange tuning. So this is our old favourite standard tuning. So in order to get into that weird position, the first most important thing to do is take your D string and tune it all the way down so that it's in unison with the A string. So now you have two A's. Then your G string goes down to E. The B string comes down to A. And you'll be glad to hear your top E string stays where it is. And uh, the bottom E string I tune down to D. Dick Gochen um, had a version of this tuning, which uh, he played some pipe tunes in uh, some years ago in the, the mid 70s. And he had the bottom string tuned to E. And uh, I just find it works a bit better if you have a, the D available in the bottom. Also, if we're going to play bagpipe tunes accurately, then we should capo up to be in B flat. The pipes are pitched a semitone sharp. The music is uh, it's always notated in the key of A. But the pitch of the instrument is actually a semitone sharp of that, so they're in B flat. So here we are. So the tuning without the capo goes D, A, A, E, A, E, which is a which is as strange as it gets in in my world of acoustic guitar anyway. So, like the C tuning, you have the the bagpipe scale is sitting under your fingers. And that low G is that crucial note that goes below the drone. And obviously, the, the whole point of having the two A's in unison is to keep that bagpipe drone going. So this tuning is, is useful for evoking some kind of uh, atmosphere of, of the pipes. It's not, um, I don't find it versatile enough to, to do much in terms of moving bass lines and uh, full on minor seventh chords and things like that. The accompaniment in this tuning is basically um, the open strings. So you, I generally just alternate between the A's and the open D on the bottom. And then the melody is happening on the top two strings. Plus that low G. So to play the seagull, we keep the drone going with the thumb and the melody with lots of triplets to uh, kind of imitate the, the way a piper would ornament the melody. That's all happening with the three fingers on the top, top two strings. So there's four parts in the tune, but they're not quite independent parts. like. Uh, the first and third and the second and fourth are variations and there's lots of repetition within the four parts. So let's slow it down.
split the screen and we'll try and play it together.